Episode 103 of the Wilderness Podcast is brought to you by our Patreon supporters. Support the show at patreon.com slash the Wilderness Podcast. Our supporter of the week is Melton. We are also brought to you by Audible. Go to audibletrial.com slash wild for a free month and free book. Guys, we got them. Welcome to episode 103 of the Wilderness Podcast. I'm your host, Dills, and with me, as always, is Deegan. Hey, how's it going? So, wow. What a week we have this one. First off, we have the Golden Gnome nominations for RuneFest 2018. A few of the content creators in there who have a chance of winning their Golden Gnomes. Except for us. Yeah. We're not going to mention that one. <laughs> Maybe next year they'll have a, a podcasting one. The Southern Ontario Podcasters. Yeah, I guess that's it. Um, yeah. That's all the requirements. Anyways, Dead Man Mode experience cap increases as well as a few random quality of life changes. And finally, the end of the saga is here. J-Mod corruption of the sen- This might be the biggest controversy to have happened. What Do you, th- do you think so? Yeah. Um, I don't know if we should spoil it because not everyone's like super up to date with the community stuff. No, we'll keep it tight till then. Okay. I would have to say it's one of the biggest things to have happened, at least since I've been big into old school RuneScape. Anyways, I'm not going to spoil any more. Dig in. What'd you do this week? Work. That's fun. As always. Always um, is. Yeah. Little bit of RuneScape. I got like 84 agility and I did a little bit of Cerberus, like 30, 40 kills. Yeah, I kind of like, I don't really have too much time to play. Uh, so when I do, I just kind of jump on, do some agility, and like, you know, watch YouTube or podcasts or audiobook, whatever. Audibletrial.com slash wild. But, um, <laughs> nice. Oh, I guess, so today, do you know what HEMA is? HEMA? Yeah. No? There are two types of listeners right now. One, that will be like, oh, Deacon's a fucking little bitch loser. And then the other will be like, oh, that sounds kind of cool. So I, I guess you'll kind of find out which one you are. So HEMA is like historical european martial arts or some shit like that okay so you you fight with swords is it larping it's not larping but um okay everyone's probably seen that that vice documentary of like those dudes that dress up in knight's armors and just beat the fuck out of each other no okay so it's not that intense but it's like it's you just kind of fight with swords and shit so it's like is it the serious version of LARPing, where they make a sport out of it? It's like, um, you take, so, you take, like, a martial arts type of a class, in terms of, like, how the pacing of, like, the two hours go, you know what I mean? Do a warm-up, learn some shit, and, like, you just spar. So, think of, like, um, beating the fuck out of each other in, like, medieval armor. Yeah. But then, like, fencing. You put that together. There's a term for it, and I know people who are into that, they wear the full metal gear, so the it, full armor with swords and whatnot, and if you call it LARPing, they don't like it. Think of, like, fencing gear, kind of. You know fencing gear? Yeah, yeah. Chest stuff, helmet you can't stab through, but then you use, like, long swords and fucking sabers and spears and shit. Okay. So, I was, like, kind of bored yesterday? And I'm like, you know what? All I do, was it yesterday? Maybe, maybe, maybe it was actually today at work. I don't know. But I was on break and I was bored. I'm like, you know what? All I do is fucking work, play a little RuneScape, go to bed. And like, it's to the point now where like, I don't even know what day it is. You know what I mean? When I was working construction, you'd lose track. You'd be like, it's, it feels like a Wednesday. Monday through Thursday all feel the same. Well, the main thing is like, I work six days a week and I get either... A Tuesday, Wednesday, or a Thursday off. It's kind of random. And, like, that's it. I get one day off, and it's in the middle of the week. And it's, so it's like, it's Sunday, but it feels like a Wednesday, you know? Okay. So, you want to spend your time off sword fighting? Eh, just doing something. Doing something fucking random. How historical are we talking? Are we talking cannons and stuff? No, no, like, medieval <laughs> shit. Like, you'll be, so, I wanted to, like, do some sort of, like, club type shit like some sort of social activity okay and like i did martial arts for a bit i'm like that was fun but it's expensive it can be i mean i know we signed up for one it was eight dollars a class what a deal 
Yeah, I guess. I mean, it, it can get pretty expensive, but... It can be. I know I was paying for some Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and it was 150 a month. Yeah, like, it, it gets pretty expensive, especially, like, if there's any big names. Um, And then, like, rock climbing and ranch, like that, like, I've, I've done most of it, and it's like, yeah, it's fun, but... So I want to try something new, and I was like, you know what? This is so fucking, like, out of the ordinary that... It's either going to be really fun or awful. Anyway, so I started, like, looking around, and there's one that's uh, decently close. Really? So I called them. It's, like, 30 minutes away. So I called them, and they're like, yeah, there's two slots left. So then me and, I guess, our roommate, because he was, like, kind of interested in it, our buddy slash roommate was like, yeah, I'm down. So we just kind of went and reserved them. Wow, totally left me out of the historical European... Marsh martial arts? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Oh man, I'm gonna show up on a horse and just deck you guys. Yeah. The only thing is, there's only two spots left. But so here's the thing, because you need like swords and shit, right? And we we're looking. You them need up. to bring your own swords. Mm, some do, but this one you don't. Okay, I was gonna. Which say. is why the group size is like really small. It's seven people. Seven people, not including instructors. Why is it? An, wh- where's my slot then? Shouldn't there be eight? Two v twos. Or 1v1s? Was it like, is there one group that's like a 1v2? The, the one guy who's like the skilled swordsman, so, dual wielding battle axes. So it might, there might be like one instructor and then seven people. So the main thing is, is that I was talking to the person and it seems like they just started doing this, like starting this group. Because mm. it started in Europe, got kind of popular, then it moved to America and it's like just starting in Canada now. And there's like a HEMA alliance group. You, I don't know, you, it's like a group that you can pay and, like, join. So it, it's weird. Is it group all of the HEMA teams? Yeah, like, you do tournaments and shit, right? So, the thing is, is that Canada isn't recognized yet. Like, you Ooh. can't you can't sign up if you're in Canada. Feels bad. Yeah, so, like, it's just started, and, and, like, the person I was talking to, they just started it, and then half the people are, well, I guess now... Four out of the seven are from our town, and three are from another town that's, like, an hour away. So, right now, like, you meet in the middle, partway in through, like, the introductory, do you like this or not type thing. Because it's six classes to do, like, introductory stuff. But partway through that, they're opening up one of the places in our town, and then one of the places in the other town. And then from there, they'll be probably opening up more people because there's they, they like supply you with the weapons and stuff and they're like 500 bucks a piece so here's so i'm kind of conflicted because one it's either going to be like a lot of fun or two like a bunch of just like neck beards like i brought my own katana from home yeah it's and it's going to be really bad but like thing is you commit it's like a 60 dollar commitment and there's like six weeks so it's 10 bucks a class I think you'll have less, ne- I guess this could be a type of quote-unquote neck beard, but someone who's more on the lines of, I live by the sword. Yeah. There are no laws beard. in my life. Yeah. S- the sword is the only law I follow. And so if it's, like, really bad and, like, cringy and shit, then, like, I get to fucking beat up people with a sword. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's a win-win. It's either it's really fun and, like, people are like, yeah, this is cool and it sticks. And then, like, after what, like... The introductory classes, they'll probably have enough money to buy more shit. I mean, I bet you, like, yeah, I don't know. Horses, maybe? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but um, the person I was talking to, it like, it like they're like a big historical nut, kind of. And they're like, so these are the things. And then like, they kind of like really got into it. So I'm like, so it's either going to be really fun or like, I'm just going to go there, turn off my brain. All right, go spar and then just fucking just smack the shit out of someone with a fucking weapon. You definitely can't go full out. You're gonna, you gonna you hurt yeah. someone, right? No, yeah, no, it's a gamble. Worst case scenario, it's like six weeks, six classes, sixty bucks. But then I can meme about it on the podcast forever. Real life Runescaper. Yeah, pretty much. Nine nine attack. <laughs> you know all that stuff. Um, I don't know. I was kind of like, fuck. It was kind of impulsive. I was like, you know what? I want to do it now. They have two slots. Hey, let's do it. Who knows? Maybe when Canada gets recognized as a HEMA competitor, you can go to the. The global HEMA meetups, and they could be like, in this corner, we got Germany, and then we got Britain, and then we got the US, and then we got Canada, and then five people, "Ah!" (laughs) Team Canada with a group of five. 
You know how like they would like in like back in like the dark ages and shit, they'd like dump oil on people and light them <laughs> on fire to like, maple syrup. Yeah. One thing I saw when we were watching like some of the tournaments, people have like tabards and stuff. That's you know, like cool. a little wild boys tabard, you know? A giant skull with yeah. a podcast. Yeah, exactly. Rep it. It'll be something, I guess. It gives me something to look forward to like throughout the week. Well, that sounds fun. I want to join. What if I take your spot? What if we show up and go, we'll do a trial by combat to see who joins? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird. It's either like really cool and it's just super new or... Or it's in some guy's basement. Or it's, yeah, and now, and now it's like getting a, a bathing suit. And, you ever watch Smart Guy? Oh, yeah. You know the, the episode where they, they meet a stranger online and he wants them to get, in, Ooh, get a- in a bathing suit, go in the basement and take pictures as if they're at the beach? Yeah, that was a dark episode. Yeah, maybe it's that, but like swords. Or you're in the garage, and then his wife comes down. I have work, and five, <laughs> stop playing with your toys. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> fireball, fireball. Yeah, I don't know. So it'll, it'll, it's something. I wonder if a guy will show up, and he's like, I'm a mage. I'm casting my fireball. Don't do it, Jimmy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Counter spell. Anyways, uh, what'd you do this week? My week, also been pretty slow. School, work. Who knows, soon enough, I think the school stuff might start kicking in, and you might start noticing difference. Like, we have a a project I got to do about articulation and about how to properly enunciate. I'm probably not, I'm failing. I'm failing right now. But anyways, not super important. On the topic of uh, medieval fighting, though, it reminded me when I tried to get into LARPing. Tried and failed, I should say. Did you go to a LARP class? No. Not class or meetup. Close. It's very close to joining. So this is going back a couple of years. We went to... There's this thing in Toronto called Fan Expo, which is basically the Comic-Con for Toronto. They had this section, which was like a LARPing section. It wasn't like set up... There's a few booths there, but it seemed kind of not... What's the word? Like unofficial booths almost. Yeah. And they had this circle where, obviously, they're trying to get people interested in LARPing, trying to take the stigma of LARPing away, you know, not a bunch of, like, bunch of nerdy people. Mm-hmm. It's we're more of just... I have golden armor. Yeah, that reflects lightning bolt. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Give me seven dexterity. Yeah. But they had these foam weapons, and there's a giant circle of people who are watching, and basically, you could go and say, I want to f- try it next. They let you choose from... You know, dual short swords, short sword and a shield, a two-handed sword. Might have been like a battle axe. Anyways, they're all like f- really like foamy, mm-hmm. but enough so that you could get a nice thud if you hit someone. Yeah, I remember I tried it and I grabbed, what, I forget what I grabbed, probably like dual, no, not dual swords. I think I grabbed a sword and a shield and I was facing this like. Was he a unit? Like Jack show? No, like big boy. No, this guy was like the opposite. Like he was like sh- kind of short, little scrawny, but he was fit. Okay. And he grabbed the dual swords and completely messed me up. Like, I'm talking, ju- he would jump, spin, slash me mm. midair, and I'm sitting there just with my shield out being like, oh, God, I don't know what to do. But it was pretty fun. Afterwards, I went and grabbed a pamphlet. I'm like, I'm, I definitely want to try this. This is kind of cool. That was decently fun. I went home, did some research, found a LARPing group, but it was not what I had tried. It was... It was like post-apocalypse LARPing, where it, this was a zombie role-playing, hmm. and I read the write-up, and it sounded pretty awesome. The more I looked into it, not so good. So, get your own armor and stuff, which was like protective chest plate for dirt, you'd use for dirt biking, which is like just hard plastic. Then you'd use Nerf guns to shoot. And so, I started looking up at Nerf guns, and there's a whole community that goes into modding oh, Nerf yeah. guns. And it was, it's kind of sweet. Some of the Nerf guns, they're not the ones that I played with when I was a kid. These are high tech and they seem decent. And they have, you know, with Amazon, you can just order gas powered uh, shit. Yeah. A gas, but you can order a ton of the Nerf pellets. And a lot of them are biodegradable. So you don't got to worry about picking them all up afterwards. Mm-hmm. Apparently, I started talking to this guy and he was telling me about it. Basically, you went to this guy's farm and you'd spend the whole weekend there. You would meet up with your group. There'd be select people who are zombies, and if you got bit, you would turn into a zombie. You would do it for the whole weekend, and you would camp out there, which also meant you needed people to stand guard at nighttime in case you got attacked. Sounds pretty cool, right? Yeah. So I'm like, that's legit. Okay, cool. And I started asking him questions, and then they started, in, they were telling me about 
So in LARPing, live action role playing. But there was a hidden G in that acronym for this group. So it was more role playing game. You start off at level one, which means I could only walk. I can't run. I can only walk. Hmm. I go, okay, that's less realistic than I was hoping. And then I started looking into it. And then the zombies have levels and they can walk. And to bite it, anyways, they show me this tutorial video that they shot, which was like, this is our commercial that we're going to send to people to get them interested. It looks so bad. It, the zombies would like walk super slow. They had a stick that they'd poke you with and be like, bit you there, bit you there. Like I was imagining people were going to get, I I guess I was picturing actual actors doing this. Yeah. You had zombies. Instead of people going, I'm coming after you. I'm yeah. going to get you. Oh, I bit. Oh, you bit me, John. Silly goose. You're now a zombie. Yeah. <laughs> and it turned out not as f- fun. It didn't. It looked a lot cringier than I had hoped. Anyways, that's my LARPing story. Why am I talking about LARPing right now? Well, not much really went on RuneScape this week. I did a lot of AFKing stuff. The odd PVMing, as always. Uh, just been busy and... Start playing City Skylines. I really got into that. I saw a video on YouTube. It's probably the same video that someone might have seen who's listening. It was on Reddit, and it was pretty popular. So anyways, they got me itching to play that game. So I've been playing that a little bit, and just busy with school. A lot of work going on. My week in a nutshell. Hmm. Anyways, let's let's hop into it. All right, so to start off this week's news i guess is runefest 2018 the golden gnome nominations yeah that's right i think it was last week or the week before we mentioned kind of the categories that they would have and how you can nominate them but now we have the exact people who are who got nominated and jagex felt were the top contenders for each category and i guess i think the way they're doing it is not through votes but jagex themselves will review the content creators and decide for themselves who they deem the winner yeah which might be the best way of doing it this way it's not just one guy able you know the most popular right it's hard to say right i mean if jagex is to like the amount that i make fun of jagex and shit on them i don't i don't and if they ever like listen to anything of like related to this podcast they're like not gonna like us because i just make fun of them the whole time should we make a the best osrs podcast (sighs) I really hate those guys. I really <laughs> don't want to give them a trophy. Yeah. Um. Anyways, we'll start it off. So they have RuneScape and OSRS category, like RS3 and OSRS. But yeah, so the video awards. So for RS3 video of the year, there's Makeru RS for the Solok guide. I think we talked about Solok a, a bit when he came out. Yeah, it was kind of a cool, cool boss. So his guide, there's the next... Nominee is RS Will Miss It, and it's the Completionist Heist. Tacky Mackie, How to Get Back into RS3. The Real Scapers, with a Z. Cowhide, Vance Joy RuneScape Song Parody. All right. And then for Old School, we have the OSRS Video of the Year, which is Guns Chili, the Hardcore Iron Man Episode Zero. Jakey Soros, Taking a New Bossing. Kemp Q, Reborn from the Ashes. The 19 Combat Fire Cape, Tanzu RS, and Virtuoso, the old school biggest challenge. And then there's like, that was involving a lot of players. Uh, C Engineer, Maraiza, Soup, Guns Chili, Manked, Ian Spam, DVS, and Jack. Yeah. You had a chance to check out any of these videos? Yeah, the taking a new bossing is kind of cool. Uh, is it what it. Well, you think it is? Yeah, he yeah. finds a noob, takes some bossing. Okay. Chem Q's, I, I really like. I, I, I really like Chem Q's content. He puts like a lot of effort into like editing, and like he does a really good job with it. And this one, I really enjoyed. I really like this video. Uh, Tanzu RS and Virtuoso, like they. If you guys don't know them, they're mainly like buddies that just do challenges against each other. And this one, I don't think this this might be where people group up and they try and make as much money in the wilderness. I'm going to begin that confused with another one, but next week we'll come back with the videos when we actually watch them and go yeah. through them. On to the next category, the best RS3 video makers is Grim Dutch, Protox Gaming, Ravlar RS and Tacky Macky. And then for OSRS, the best new, or sorry, best new, I should have put that in there because I guess they have a new category just so it's not the same people over and over again. Yeah, it gives them a chance where 
the young bloods. You yeah, know? if you're a new channel, this is a great way for it to grow. Yep. Yeah, but yeah, so the best new OSRS video makers are Caveman Only, or these are nominations, sorry. Caveman Only, Ditter Bitter, KempQ, and Shaperka. Oh, or Shaperka, right. however you want to say that. I think it's Shaperka. Whatever. Yeah, I mean, I've seen some videos from all these guys. Caveman Only is, he only, he's an Iron Man only in caves. Yeah, I remember when a user on the subreddit who was doing one beaver fact a day until he got the beaver pet. This guy came along and did his um, caveman. Yeah, it's like one fun fact about caves that you might not have known. And there's a lot of cool stuff that I didn't realize. But yeah, his um, progress, is, it's really just weird because best in slot stuff is uh, dragon chain body type shit, you know? Yeah, it's there's another Iron Man who's Karamja only. Mm-hmm. I remember seeing some of his progress stuff. I don't know if he does YouTube videos. He might. I think he does now. Yeah. Okay. But his best gear, it's like full obsidian, bunch of the obsidian armors. Like that's a cool one. You know what I mean? You have a lot of content to work with. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can ever do Slayer. No. Don't think so. No Slayer. No. I don't think you can do farming. Um, because there's no no Taskmaster. On. Oh well, no, that's a lie. There's Duradel. Duradel, but um. Wondering if you need a certain Slayer level to actually use him for the first time. Uh, it's just combat, I'm pretty sure. 110 combat. But the problem is you get a Slayer task that's not on the island as, like, your first 10. Yeah, you're fucked. Yeah. It's time to remake. Ditter Bitter. Is this the guy who does In Dead for a Pet? No, that is Guns Chili. Okay, I don't know if, like, I I think that's a really cool series. I don't know why that isn't, uh... I think he won last year. Oh, did he? I think so, yeah. Damn, I didn't know he was going on for this long. Um, that's cool, though. Ditter Bitter, I know he's... Like, I started watching him through, th- like, the past week's the tournament Deadman Mode stuff. I've just watched his recent Deadman Mode content. Chem Q, like I said, I think he's pretty dope. Has, like, a lot of really cool ideas. He's like, got, like, a 10 HP Iron Man that he PKs with and all this stuff. And then Shaperka or whatever you... Shaperka. Whatever. I don't know what they do. The only reason I'm a- aware of her is because... I would watch some of Guns Chili's videos, and I think he's friends with her. Like, they do bossing together. Okay. Yeah, they did. She did a um, fashionscape competition. Okay. That, that's how I know of her. It was, like, through Twitter and shit. Cool. But, yeah. Um, anyways, moving on. So, the best RS3 video maker. Guides for us all. Makeru RS. Mr. Adelaide RS. And the RS guy. A lot of RSs in there. I can dig it. Yeah. Um, the best OSRS video maker, you got Framed, Slayer Music 1, Tanzu RS, and Virtuoso, or Vir- Virtuoso, Vir- Virtuoso, Virtuoso, I, I want to say Virtuoso, so I'm, Sounds gonna, better. I'm adding an extra vowel. Yeah, and Torvesta. So I'm trying to think if there's anyone that I think deserves a spot on there. A friend? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, I don't want to get into some debate on who do you think should win, da 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 do you think Slayer Music deserves a spot on there? He makes a lot of questing guides, and they're good questing guides. Well, in my opinion, though, but they're they're helpful. Yeah, they're my helpful. quality's kind of low. Like the La- there's not too much editing. Um, well, there's none. <laughs> well, like minor. Like it's just him running the quest. Yeah, I feel like it's more of like a shout out to the community. Um, yeah, maybe just have your name on here. We'll have people checking out who you are, right? Yeah. I, I'm just biased. I don't know if ChemQ won like last year or something. I'm not too sure. Uh, I, I totally don't remember. But I just think that out of everyone, he puts the most effort into editing in terms of like, you don't fucking hear a fire alarm. I, ironic that I'm saying this because at my old place, I had a fire. My, my fire, my smoke detector or whatever is probably chirping right now. <laughs> uh, Poor neighbors. It chirped for a couple months. It's too lazy to change the battery. But like you can hear in Torvesta's the background of his uh of his mic. He doesn't really like fix it. Twenty five buttholes. Oh, he he does some good videos. Yeah. Some of his videos, if you haven't seen them, they're very meme y. Yep. But some really good editing. Yep. They're short and sweet for the most part, but some of them he really hits the ball out. My favorite one is the Power Ranger one. It's too funny. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's like 20 seconds long, but it's awesome. Yeah. Someone in the Discord, though, made a good good recommendation. Where's our OSRS Streamer Highlights of the Week channel? 
Why is that one not nominated? Yep, yep. <laughs> I swear to God, if that's ever a nominee, like, I'm going to go to RuneFest, and I'm just going to start flinging shit everywhere. Yeah, if if they make it on there, then we should have our shit yep. as best YouTuber, even though we just literally put up the audio with nothing in the background. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, have a podcast awards specific section. Honestly, though, you could do, like, overall with RuneScape 3 and OSRS. Yeah. Because there are two pretty good RuneScape 3 podcasts, which is a RSBNB update and a RuneScape Weekly. And they've been going on for a while. I know RSBNB, so I listen to them every now and then whenever there's a new update that comes out that I'm kind of interested in RuneScape 3. So I'll check it out. But fuck, they've been going for so long. You can go back and listen to episodes of when they removed the wilderness for the first time in 2007. Yeah. It's crazy. So, yeah, there's, I guess, a little shout out there. If you guys want to go check out some, get into the vaults and listen to some really old episodes of back when you might have played RuneScape for the first time, go check. It's, it's, uh, it's historical evidence. Yeah. That's what it is. It's a time capsule for sure. Yeah. But yeah, um, I guess we'll move on to the next category, which is the streaming awards. So the best new RS3 streamers are Oz Swag, Empathies, or Empaths, Empathzy, Empathzy, I guess. I don't even know how you would say that. Um, Spider Mash and Wazzy. Okay, cool. Yeah. Best new OSRS streamer, Abyss, Lake, Perp, Sephiro, Sephiro, I don't know. My reading comp. This job. I think you're reading too much into these names. <laughs> this job is just ruining my my reading abilities. I'm pissed if Abyss wins. I'm gonna be honest. Why? I don't. Li- I don't like him. <laughs> that's, the- so that's a very biased <laughs> look at his streams, right? Obviously, it's my opinion. But when I watch his stream, okay, so his main thing is that he PKs in like like couple hundred mil with their gear, right? Like he's bringing like like fucking max switches sometimes. Like he's bringing really good gear. Okay. But he also has, like, 30, 40 people following him around in stream. And all he does is, like, attack black chin hunters. And he gets his buddy or these followers to just TB for him and shit. And then if anyone fights him with any gear, he just immediately, like, he's down three brews and he just runs away. But he's not a bad P care. There's actually a really sick video of him tanking a clan. Like, it's really good. Um, I don't know what it's called. Just look up, like, OSRS Abyss, like, clan tanking. I don't fucking know. So, he's not bad. It's just, like, I don't... It's, like, it comes off as, like, kind of clickbaity. You know what I mean? It would be, like, um... It would be, like, if we titled this, like, Biggest Jagex... Like, what would you call it? Biggest Jagex conspiracy ever. And then it's, like, they... They're gonna... Jagex ra- goes to jail. And then, like, <laughs> and then you find out that they're, like, playing, and then we, we're just like, yeah, they're they're playing Monopoly, and they all kept getting put in jail. That's you probably know I mean? a huge exaggeration. It's a big one. <laughs> but, like, it's like, you're kind of expecting some intense, you know, mad risk fights. This is why they don't let us vote. Yeah. <laughs> That's why they leave it to Jagex to choose. Yeah. Maybe I'm biased. I do like uh, Lake's content, mainly because you do, like, solo Iron Man, like, a lot of, like, Xerix and stuff. He's really good. Um, did you, have you watched any of these streamers? Mm, no i know like from the theater of blood right yeah yeah I but i wasn't was watching his stream specifically um i don't watch streamers too too often my problem is streaming is like a really cool thing to watch if you have like five hours to kill and nothing else to do right i i'm not a huge fan like i feel like if you want to see the good stuff you got to be there for quite some time you can't jump in for 10 minutes at least that's my preference there was a time where i was watching a lot of streamers while i was gaming and stuff but i find youtube videos you know it's shortened down right kind of like the highlights it's condensed and it's uh right to the point it's not like yeah you watch bodie's hardcore iron man on twitch and it's like two weeks of fucking like you know three tick fishing and then you can watch youtube videos 20 minutes of condensing those two weeks you know what i mean yeah there's a few streamers that if I knew they were on, I'd go watch them. I forget what his name is, but there's that guy who played old school. Who's a variety streamer? Played old school RuneScape for the first time. Maximus Black. Yeah, yeah. I I enjoyed his streams. Yeah, a little. Him. I know there's some controversy mixed up behind him, but really, not maybe not controversy, but a lot of people are pissed that I'm saying like the only reason you're playing old school RuneScape is because you know you'll get a lot of donations. He didn't take donations really when he played. The- not not in game donations, oh, but really? money, yeah. which is. That's why you're streaming in the first place. 
I mean, I used to watch him when StarCraft Two was big because I was I was into the game at the time, mm-hmm. and that's how I found out about him. Um, what team? He, was he Rue Cat? So I forget which what he was, which team he was sponsored by. But um, Not a clue. and then he started playing League, and so like he's always got that he's he's, he's big personality, sings yeah. and shit. Does yeah, improv he's improv singing, and it's he's pretty good at it. He's, yeah, he's pretty good at singing. I um, know. Um, like I. You can go watch his clips, I think, on YouTube of him beating the fire cave. Or he, he, the reason I liked it is because he tried his best not to get tips from other players and he would play the game blind. Yeah. So when he did the fire cape for the first time, he got one shot right off the bat because he didn't know mm-hmm. he could one shot you or what he even hit. So his like first four attempts or so, he's just getting destroyed. Yeah. They're kind of funny. Anyways, you want to move on? Yeah, we should probably move on. Yeah. So best RS3 streamer is Couchy. I trolled you, Miss Littles, the RS guy. All right. The best OSRS streamer, Bodhi, Foe, MMORPGS, Sick Nerd. Those Seems are the fair. biggest streamers. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll move on. I I personally, if I'm watching an RS or OSRS stream, I like watching like smaller channels. Sometimes I'll do that because it's kind of fun and you, it's more interactive, right? Yeah, I'm sorry if I said this story before, but this is the main reason why I, I like watching them. I, I was bored one day. What was I doing? It's like I think I was crafting or something uh, for like my 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 master clue. I was doing some random shit. I don't know. Watching this guy and he had like a fucking 200k bank and he was solo PVPing at revs, but he'd go with full black dehyde, rune crossbow, broad bolts, and a G mall. And then sharks, that that's legit. Like he would he would fucking run up there. He would like go and try and fight people. Like it was like yeah, he wasn't getting like any kills. It was um it was fun to watch. Like it's like a like, little noob, like, you know, go and try and PK and make money. And then I watch him die like twice, and he like goes to his bank and he's like, Fuck, I can't buy anything. And he has like fifty K at this point. Hmm. Like he's like the guy's like level like ninety or some shit, level a hundred. And I was just, like, chilling. You know, I was feeling good. I, I think I just bought, like, all my max gear and shit. So I had some money. And I was like, you know what? And I went and bought him, like, 10 or so proper PK sets. And, uh, you know, hooked him up. And he was, like, super thankful. And he's like, didn't even know anyone was watching, to be honest. I'm like, yeah, dude, fucking go PK some people. Gave him some dragon stone bolts. You know, told him what to do. And then he, like, went out and literally got two back-to-back kills in one trip. Oh, nice. And he was, like, super excited. And I'm like... That's what I like to see. Like, you know what I mean? Like, a guy, like, genuinely just, like, playing RS, just, like, streaming and shit. And then he's like, oh, someone's watching. Oh, dude, I don't want to take this. Okay, cool. Thanks, man. And then, like, him going out and you watch him get kills now. It's, like, the more wholesome side of Twitch. It's just, like, you can't talk to Bodhi. Yeah. I mean, you can't even read chat. It's just memes and shit and, like, fucking emotes. I don't know. It's nice to, like, watch the little guys, chat with them, say, you know, say some shit. I got one guy to smoke like eight bongs in like ten minutes. He was like, his title was like, <laughs> "Tell me to smoke weed or some shit like that." And I was like, "Yo, smack a bong," and he goes and like smokes one. And I'm like, "Do another," and he's just like, "Dude, I'm fucking down." He just, <laughs> and his calm is like in between his PK trips, sit there and smoke a bunch of weed. And I'm like, "This is way too funny." Can you smoke weed on if it's legal in in your state or province or country? So you can smoke weed on uh on stream, yeah, and like it's like drinking. You can dr- you can drink can on drink st- on stream. Yeah, you can't just you can't be like, I'll drink with like take a shot thought- with donations and so you can't do that. I but- thought you could drink like off stream, but you could be drunk. Yeah. Okay. No, you can drink on. You just can't do like um. They, they're- What's smoking cigarettes? Oh yeah, son of an old school baby. He's banned for though. saying the n word though. Oh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> that guy used to fucking pound beer. I have some gifts on my computer of him chugging brewskis on stream. Miss that guy. Um. Anyways. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll move on, though. Yeah. Um, art awards. So, best artist creation. We have Beats by Tickle. It's the rune stape for best artistic creation. So, we made that specifically for this nomination. Basically. Oh, okay. Haiti A- Atisudo. Okay. Dead Man Mode. Vicky Ligt. L-I-G-T. Hmm. Saradom and Godsword. Zahar. Neve striked out literally any other piece of work. Yeah, if you're um 
you're a big you, memer, you go on the subreddit, you'll that that'll make a lot of sense. You'll be no stranger to the Neve content. Yeah, there's a weird. He, this guy created like a weird influx of like rural thirty four, like hentai or not hentai. Is it considered hentai? That's what I don't understand. Is any cartoon porn of RuneScape? Yeah, if, is, which it, there was a lack of. Let's be real. We we well, obviously need more. I, okay, maybe there was a lack of it, but it did. It's not like it did not exist. But now he yeah, he he did some lewd picture of Neve, and then and now we're here. It was a sh- suggestive yeah. picture at first, and it, it quickly went from like Neve to the baguette sandwich lady to like the milk lady to literally any female yeah. in old school RuneScape. Yeah, but it was weird. But yeah, anyways, um, <laughs> best weird. artist Dagna Gl- Glassite. Legend Arts and Zahar. Okay. I feel like Legend Arts should win this because of all the uh, merch and shit that they make. Oh, that's... Yeah, Legend Art does the, uh, the the keychains and the pins. What a creative person. Yep. I know, I know his photos pretty well because I have a lot of his stuff as my wallpaper. Yeah. Well, I used to on my computer. Like, Zahar does some good pictures, but I'm, I'm not trying to downplay his work they're really good but i feel like um even with like dagna i don't know if you've seen it but they're very epic photos yeah so i the criticism i see with zahar is that it's aesthetically like it looks good it's good art but it's not hard it's like um it takes talent of course yeah When, when i say hard sorry it's not like um I don't know. Like, how how would you just like? It's, there's, it's not as detailed. Yeah, as the there's other no ones. complex detailing. Like, like he's but his art style itself, like is his like his specific, specific way of like drawing is like I that's like my shit. Yeah, it looks it does look yeah, really good. It's it's so yeah, I like it. Legend Arts just dope as fuck. I honestly don't know the other two. <laughs> I've never Dagna seen this. does one similar to Legend Arts where it has like a whole scene kind of played out. I have some pulled up here if you want to look. Yeah, make that shit full screen. Oh yeah, this isn't old. Anyways, um, yeah, it's like RS3 stuff. Yeah, they they can't it can't all be old school. <laughs> sadly, who was what? the person that did that that iconic um one v one in the wilderness? The old school where it's like the guy at the AGS about to spec, and then the dude. I think that was Legend Arts. That was Legend Arts. The Serp Helm and and shit is it the Serp Helm like Warhammer. I I think you had it as your desktop for a little bit. This one here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that is Legend Arts. It's a uh, very cool. Yeah, it was my background for a while. I want to say hyper detailed. I don't know. It's like a very detailed. It's really nice. The guy in like typical strength PK like um Zerker gear. I guess. Yeah. Gonna go AGS spec some like dude with like maybe like Infernal cape and shit. On? I don't know. Fire I, I don't cape. know why we're. T- I'm trying to describe the like what the art looks like. We tried every time and fail. So yeah. let's move on. So the winners will be announced on the day, and there'll be additional awards for cosplay for most creative and best. And the community categories, so make sure to turn it in, t- tune into the stream if you're not attending in person. They have a RuneFest 2018 iOS and Android app. Gives you everything you need to know about the actual event itself, so download that if you choose to. But yeah, moving on to some RuneScape related, uh, old school related shit, I guess, right? Dead Man Moon, yeah. Yeah. So, Dead Man experience cap increase and the quality of life changes. There's been a large amount of feedback regarding the current experience caps in Dead Man season with the introduction of the Ancient Warriors equipment, which is, you know, all the, the, the proposed PvP gear, and we've talked about that stuff in the past. But, um, yeah, and more players than, like, are, you know, everyone's eager to head out and try it ASAP. And, yeah, so the daily experience caps this season will be increased. Typically, I think another reason for this is that... Oh, sorry. Let me go into the actual numbers. So, 500,000 experience per day shared across defense and range at a cap of 750k experience in magic or 750k in attack and strength. And so, that's what the old cap was. The new one is 700,000 between defense and range. One one mil, well, 1.05, 1 mil 50k, I guess, in magic and 1 mil 50k in between attack and strength. As the season rolls on, potion prices get higher as less people train the skills required. As a result, certain potions are added to the Bounty Hunter store, especially with all the emblems that get put into the game because oh, yeah. Slayer and stuff. So yeah, you can buy Super Tax, Super Strengths for 1,000, Ranging Pots for 6,000, 
Super Restores for 10,000, Brews for 25,000, Prayers for 3,000, Stamina's for 8,000. Cool. Um, because potion prices kind of got messed up. Anyways, let, let's just jump back a second. So I think the main reason why they upped this, the experience cap, one, the armor, like you want to hit 78 ASAPs, so you can actually like equip the armors. Yeah, it would suck to just have it sitting there, right? Yeah. If you unlocked it. And um, the main thing is, is so the first couple days is really awkward because you can't kill people unless like you catch them in like the middle of nowhere. You find them in Africa or you multi and you and your team jumps them. Typically, though, everyone does such little damage because you're just gimped that I, I've complained about it before. But like the bad players die no matter what because they're in a bad position. No food, blah, 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 blah. And so they leave, they're not the bad players, the inexperienced dead men mode players, um, because it's obviously a completely different game. And then the experienced players get bored because they can't kill each other, so it just becomes like feast or famine type thing. Yeah. And people get bored and they quit, so they've upped the cap. Um, I should specify the reason why defense and range is put together, because there's a common build people do, especially the first couple days. Is they level their magic to what, like sixty or some shit? I don't know. But they they specifically train just range and defense, and then become like a rag ranger. Yeah, which is like you just camp a crossbow, and you just pray, and you just because you can sit there and hit through prayer, and you just kind of chip away at people and you rag them. Uh, so if someone jumps you, you can just sit there and like brew and kind of rag and chip away at them, and the fights just never go anywhere, and people just kind of kill their supplies. Obviously, attack and strength because you know they're heavily related yeah but yeah uh you like these changes yeah i get they seem good i'm not too knowledgeable about the dead man mode scene i try to get in every season but i find if you don't have a lot of time every day it's kind of demotivating yeah you fall behind and it's very apparent Mm -hmm. very fast i jumped in two days after it started and everyone i saw running around were just level 70s and 80s and you know what i mean obviously you're gonna see them but i saw, i didn't see very many people below that level yeah yeah anyways we'll talk about quality of life things that have actually affected the base game so the salve amulet enchanting added to a make x system mainly you know theater of blood um that shit was fucking annoying to enchant um, do, you have, do you drop them or something? Yeah. Oh. You, you kill the blow at the second boss, and you drop your salve amulet. That's the strat. So you don't <laughs> imbue it. You just uh, you make them, and then you enchant them at the Karn's evil lair. True. Okay. Yeah. Yes, now there's like a make all enchant, which saves you so much time. The right-click option to claim pure essence from wizard Crompertry. Crompertry, sorry. Yeah. Um, You unlock that through the arty, medium, hard, and elite diaries. You can just... Claim some some pure essence. Nice for Iron Man. Cool. Um, PvP rotation. This is other new stuff. Uh, Twitch Prime purple skin is now available to everyone. Birds nests appear over most logs. Dragon bones and hides are more likely to appear above less valuable drops, such as food. Okay. All right. Um, I guess those Venezuelans will will be down. <laughs> Players are now unable to wield banner objects in PvP and bounty hunter worlds. Bounty Hunter Worlds, as they were used to attempt to grief others because of the click box. Your character click box model will, like, be the banner as well. Right, yeah, yeah. So you can kind of just mess people up and whatever. Stand in the way so if people are fighting each other, yep. they're going to click you by accident. Yeah, I think we talked about this during the quality of life updates, right? A while ago? Yeah, um, when they proposed them. Yeah, this one finally got brought in. I guess there were some issues with it. I believe that's pretty much it. There's like there's obviously there's a lot more like little changes. Yeah, I don't think it's too important. Blocking was added to a piece of gemstone in the Quran catacombs. Things you're probably not going to notice. Little tweaks that just make everything fit. Anyways, they did another release date announcement for mobile. I don't know why, but hey, Android and iOS, October 30th is the date. Yep, pre-order in the App Store and pre-register on Google Play. We've mentioned it before. For some reason, it popped back up in the dev blog, but no extra information was added to it. Which means, is it time? It is time to actually get to the, uh, I guess, the juicy bit of what happened this week in terms of news. 
Yeah, news. It's a- um, it's an end of a saga for us over here. It feels like it's a season finale. It's like um, it's the end of an arc. But I, you know how I always joke and say I'm never wrong. Yeah. Well, I'm never wrong. I'm always <laughs> right. So here we go, guys. All right. This is like in Dragon Ball Z when they finally kill Frieza after the 30th time. And you're sitting there being like, okay, they killed the big bad boss. Now what? One popped up later on. That might happen in the future. But for now, this is our Frieza. Well, actually, technically, this is the other big bad boss. This is true. Uh, With, is it Infinity? Mod Reach. Mod Reach. Okay. Um, Right. Anyway, so clearly with that... There is a um, old school RuneScape scandal, I guess. I don't know if we talked a little bit. I don't think we did when there was other things. Anyways, whatever. Um, Mod Reach? No, no, with this. So let's quickly go back and we'll start with the origin of the J Mod the saga. Masterminds, the saga. The saga. Wait, wait, we gotta. So there's Reach, allegedly Infinity. Well, a lot of evidence, but I don't. Wasn't whatever, and then now this new guy, which we'll talk about in a second. But we, there's three of them, so we're, we gotta we gotta give them a nickname. Are they the true wild boys? They're pretty <laughs> wild. This is some wild shit. Anyways, it doesn't matter if you actually if you have a good nickname, hit us up. Let us steal that shit. We gotta gotta give these boys a nickname. So mod infinity. There's some controversy in the past where he had banned players from clan chats for. He would show up in a clan chat and then ban people talking if they're being even the most little bit offensive. If not banned, they would mute them. Even though... Mo- or, or he just didn't like them. Yeah, but that... Yeah, that's basically what it was. Clan... Even though clan chats, for the most part, are like a, are like tight-knit groups, right? Yeah. So, obviously, you talking in that clan chat might be a bit different than how you would talk to a random person on RuneScape. Right? Might yeah. be a more, bit more offensive... But it's all banter. You're not serious about it, generally speaking. Um, no, no. So with Mod Infinity, he he, yeah, not only messing with clans, but there's a lot of evidence that he had real world traded. Thing with evidence on RuneScape, it's never concrete, so always take it with a grain of salt. But it's there. Yep. And then Mod Reach was a J Mod who had gotten fired. Jagex never really disclosed what happened. Well, they can't, right? And they won't. That's not really the right thing to do with the community. But they told us that... And their company. Yeah, and their company, <laughs> yeah. But they had told us that he had been let go for some reasons. But people started speculating, and the rumors started. So there was a a bug with the corporeal beast, where you were able to... That was implemented. That's the main thing, is that the bug was implemented into the, at some point. Yeah, or it, if it was found out, it wasn't fixed. Yeah. It might have not been put there, but when it was apparent that it was there, he may or may not have told anybody. He might have, like him and his buddy, may or may not have abused it, which is pretty much you could have infinite Gmall spec and be invulnerable at Corp, and there was a bunch of bot accounts killing Corp. Making a lot of money. He gets fired, buys an Audi. An expensive one. Like 50K or something. I thought it was like 100 and something K. I thought it was on like 50K. Uh, I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't matter. But anyways, blah, 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 blah. Enough um, beating around the bush. So let's bring this back to the origins. If you've been listening with us for a while now, or maybe even just an episode ago, you are no stranger to the villain of Mod Jed. Yeah, the man I, I have accused of time and time again from... Um, manipulating pvp polls to uh my bad rng yeah he's pretty much the cause of everything that is bad in the game if we have any blips over with our equipment might be him yep the fact that like our internet's being pretty fucky in general it was probably him it's probably tapped in yeah flew out over here anyways so um this whole mod jed fiasco started the end of last year around it was about a year ago when the infamous rev caves are around around that time was where mod jed was like quote unquote exposed by another clan so he he came on the radar yeah he joins jagex and he's you know in a clan called rot which is known well i mean i guess all clans or like most of these like big pvp clans like do some pretty bad things ddosing doxing yeah 
So he comes from this clan, and Rot is like we we've talked about before, but they're like notorious for doing this, like for DDoSing and stuff, like the Jagex servers, other players, all this stuff. There is a another clan, one of the rival clans. Rival, that's where I was looking for. A, a rival clan called Frontlines released like an exposed series on Rot, and they like leaked like IRC like text, like chats, chat yeah. logs. IRC is like where clans used to talk about things in the past they still do to some extent but now with discord you don't really need to yeah. as much but yeah they had irc logs they had um like they hacked his Giazo account it was forum posts where forum rot posts, was discord posts and it was pretty much like rot and them talking about how jed like com- conspires with them yeah, and for how knocking people like helping with the DDoSing and and they receive information on certain upcoming changes within the game, like the Dead Man mode final hour that Rot One, and that this was the one where it was Alcarad and you had to click through like a fence into the entrance. So Rot was there before everyone, and they just it was multi, so they just AOE piled everything with a holder or heartbeat that came through the entrance, and they just like swept. In this video, they had a, um, gifts and pictures and video of this certain account, Ethereum Girl. Yeah, which is his account. Yeah, and he would be around for when certain DDoSs happened, when the servers would get hit offline. Or other people, yep. There's, like, video evidence of, like, dudes specking out, like, raw um, leaders in the wildy for, like, max. And then you see, like, the like within the group, you, you can see Jed's account there, but then he instantly pretty much gets DDoSed, like... As he's looting. A um, lot of like weird stuff. And um, the main thing is that like. Whether or not he actually did any of the DDoSing. He was around for it. Yeah. Which starts to make you wonder. Yeah. And they also talk about how he like rigged. The, like like it's all because it's just like screenshots and gifts in a YouTube video. Obviously it's not fucking like. D- like you can't really. There's not like DNA evidence where it's like <laughs> obviously this is him. There's no, like, camera in Jed's fucking room, and he's just, like, you know, teeter-tottering away at his keyboard DDoSing. Yeah. Like, some things were, like, how he rigged the PvP polls to pass, because, like, that was a very... Con- like, we had, like, four episodes dedicated to P- to the PvP rev caves. Not all of it passed, though. Not all of it passed. No, but the, the main thing is that, like, there was, like, within, like, these logs, it was Rock talking about how Jed has rigged the... Like, has rigged it. Yeah. Um, obviously, like I said, it's not super hardcore evidence, but, um, and cause Jed did design rev caves. And right around that time of the video, a bunch of rot members obtained single letter names. Yep. Which are very rare names, right? How often do you see them? There's a very limited amount of names you can have with one single letter or digit. Yeah. And the way like accounts would get hacked, wiped, and then, or if they were like useless accounts, but like hacked, boom, name changed and then like picked up and it was kind of like lots of posts on the reddit um were like this is impossible i have like no one knows my actual login name or email like there's all this like really intense recovery login info Mm -hmm. that they were able to get and they're like this literally no way is this possible but you see that stuff all the time on the subreddit where someone says like no way it's possible and then the jmod will come in and say well no you've been account sharing with like three people for like a long time you know what i mean so people kind of wrote off a lot of this and the problem with the single letter name since they're so valuable what's stopping from somebody who owns that name to selling it to somebody else for real world money which is a common Common and a big possibility. But the reason that this started to become a controversial moment was because some of those names were then returned to the original owners. Not all of them, but some of them were. And the big thing is that key ROP members were getting some of these names, too. Yeah. That was a thing where it's like, they're in cahoots. So Red, or Red, Jed, Lee's ROT, everything's kind of like, okay. But you know me, right? I beat a dead horse. I I call him out on everything, you know? I'm like, Jed, come on, what are you doing? Yeah, stop messing around. Yeah. But another thing that he had participated, not, he had allegedly and rumored participated in, I believe it was the release of Fossil Island. There was a quest involved. Oh, yeah. Some people talked up on an item called vodka. Yeah, and Russians don't play RuneScape. No, they're playing something else. I don't know what. Anyways. They'd probably be playing Eve. Eve, okay. Well, vodka is not normally traded, sold, or bought at large amounts because you don't use it for much. Yeah, use it for what? Like um, mixed drinks with the gnomes? 
Yeah. <laughs> like I the gnome so. cooking shit. But there was a large quantity that was bought right before the quest came out. Then the quest came out, and guess what? Turns out you're going to need to use vodka in that quest. Someone did the math of whoever or whomever, the people who knew this, made like hundreds of mills. Like they made so much money off this that um, it was like it's kind of a big deal. Um, the, the huge amounts of flips, but someone could have got lucky, but it's a very weird item in a very weird time to yeah. stock up on it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, shit, I guess the re- up to the release of Theater of Blood, like there's a lot of things me and my buddies were speculating and like everything made sense to, in some way. The vodka didn't really make any sense, but whatever. Nobody knew if there was going to be a quest involved with Fossil Island, especially one where you have to get vodka for a pirate or something on those lines. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, that's pretty much it with all that stuff. That happens. He comes on the radar for the community, becomes the source of everybody's problems. Fast forward, you know, Rev Caves and all that is out. Big flop. A lot of people kind of look at Jed some more. What are you doing, man? So anyways, let's fast forward to the 21st of September. Okay, so before, sorry, before this, a couple days before this, Ma Jed's Twitter account gets banned. And everyone's like, this is kind of weird. And his RuneScape account goes off the high scores. Yeah. So anyways, let's uh, get right down to it. So on the 21st, Jagex releases, I guess, yeah, Jagex makes a kind of like final statement about what is going on. And so this is what they say. I guess I'll just read it out verbatim because it's, it's pretty big. So we confirm that a member of the old school team was dismissed from employment at Jagex following gross misuse of moderator privileges. During our rigorous routine system checks, irregular activity was identified on a a small number of accounts, including the amount of wealth and items back into the live game. Following our investigation, we were able to resolve the issue before any significant impact was made to the wider game or economy. We have also taken steps to return items and GP to any affected accounts. Whilst we generally do not return items or gold, we feel that given this unusual situation, we wanted to ensure no players lost out on the rogue actions of a moderator or a member of staff. We are actively working with the police regarding the incident, but given this is an ongoing legal matter, we are unable to provide further details. We we pride ourselves on the passion and integrity of JMods that work for Jagex, and we hold them to the highest standards. However... We are not afraid to take tough action and make difficult decisions if someone cannot meet those standards. We will dust ourselves off and move on. Old school's at its biggest and strongest since launch, but we still have much to do. Not at least not at least a mobile launch, which each day gets closer. And then from the 21st, they add on, we can confirm that none of our players' banks, card detail, or, or card deals were compromised. We work within an industry-respected, fully compliant third-party payment processor to purposely avoid staff having access to players' full bank or card detail. Real-life bank, by the way, or card detail. This also applies when players choose to save their details at a payment stage for any future purchases. Jagex undergoes regular third-party testing to ensure we maintain the highest security standards. As always, thank you for your support, the old school team. To summarize it, a JMod goes rogue and they legally can't say anything because it's court of law. Like they're, they're in a current legal battle right now. This person is could see jail time. They're in hot water. Um, well, like these are some serious crimes. But before we do go forward, I do want to say a huge kudos to Jagex for actually making this statement. I don't really know any other company that would come out and say something like this because this all came out of left field. Yeah, we make our jokes, whatever, about Jagex and the J mods. Nobody was really stirring up anything at this time. Mm-hmm. They found this out. They said we should make a statement. It's pretty surprising to see a company to be this transparent for no reason. They had they they had nobody to answer to. This was just coming out, and it took us by storm, right? Yeah, it came like way out of left field. I got a text from you actually. I was at work, and you're like, "Dude, go check the subreddit." And I'm like, peek on my phone, and I see like this announcement, and I start like glancing. And I'm like, I'm going on break. I gotta read this fucking thing, and I'm just like, no way, what the f-? like is just out of nowhere. I was in class, and some people were messaging me on Discord, so I was like, let me, and I yeah, same idea. I was like, no way, this mm-hmm. 
can't be happening. So it's like most like they can't they legally can't say it's Mod Jed, but given like his account ban, his Twitter ban, and all this stuff, it's a safe assumption. Very safe assumption, yeah. Um, but we can't be a hundred percent certain. Yeah. So I guess what what really went on is that it was discovered that a J Mod was helping or was one of the main causes or leads or reasons why certain high value accounts were getting hacked and losing bank. If you do frequent the subreddit, you'll see from time to time these posts come up about somebody losing billions of GP. Mm-hmm. Most of the time, it would get chalked up to, hey, either you were lazy with your security. Got fished, whatever it was, yeah. Or you real world traded. Yep. I know myself, I had seen this one dude post saying, I've been hacked for 45 bill. But his post was a little bit sketchy, where he said he had just sent up, he had no pin on his account, on his bank. He had set it up, and it was like two days until it was activated, mm-hmm. and all of his money was gone. Everybody had said either, A, you real, real world traded it, or B, you got fished, and you were just not smart with that account. But yeah, so mainly, Jmod's accused of helping players get hacked, um, losing names, mainly GP. Oddly enough, rival clan members would get hacked for their banks, and all their untradables would get dropped. The like actual evidence, because Jagex had, they would log in and get messages saying you've been re- like this has been returned to your account, blah 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 blah. And they with the statement where they're going to reimburse players, it's like okay, so this J Ma was involved with this player's account, and this guy was in like say fools or front lines, and it's like forty mils in your or forty bills back in your account or whatever, like whatever, how much money? All like your infernal max capes, your graceful, like yeah. So this yeah. week, many players logged in to see. In their chat box, you have 45 bill. A lot of the or counts. like nine bill. Some people, there's one guy that got like 300, like gold, like gold, just 300 gold. I don't know if it was a meme. That one's got to be a meme. Most of the but accounts that were hacked were, there was like what, nine to like 50 bill. I, I saw a lot. In those there was days. over 300 billion GP stolen. Yeah. Which is a fuck ton. That's a lot of money. Yeah. What one hundred sixty six thousand dollars real life USD, something like that. People speculate about sixty five grand trading in bulk and stuff to gold selling sites. You'll get out of it. Yeah, I guess a, less. Kind of sketchy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like what the fuck? Uh, I think there it's was, sorry, sorry to keep going, but there was people that got hacked nine months ago. Yeah, that had their stuff returned. And keep in mind, at seven months. Mod Mad K made a made a statement saying that they vetted Mod Jed. Nothing came up as fishy. They could just be saying that to kind of lay a trap as well. Sometimes, you know, maybe the police will do or a company if they have kind of the inkling that one of their employees is up to something. They won't let on that they have any any suspicions and they'll wait so they can collect evidence yeah, and they'll let like, them do it again or the opposite like no you're good we checked you and they're like fuck i'm not gonna get caught they think i'm good so they yeah exactly it, and then they're like that's I, we kind of summed it up quickly i guess big build up quick little sum up but um start of my life <laughs> big build up but it was quick the main thing is that if an employee this employee this like let's just say we're gonna just say ma jed because it's probably him. If not, then what a meme. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, we'll see him on the Q&A this week, just chilling. You're yeah. Go, Oof. April Fool's. Who was that that? that would have been a good April Fool's joke. Ooh. Holy shit, Jagex. That would have been so good. That's, I mean. That's coming up this year. That's got to come up this year. Where people like, eight bills may return to your account. And then you get that message. and like the Oh, that one itself. And, I thought you meant like, hey, we fired someone for stealing gold. Okay, I'm, Sir, I, I just gotta get this thought because I'm gonna forget it. Imagine logging in eight bill print or air quotes plat tokens in your account. You go to use them on the bank and they disintegrate to dust. Ooh, funny. So, anyways, like legally, this is like a breach of like company data. Yeah, this is like a misuse of company data. So you could go to jail for like a while. Yeah, stealing information, possibly giving it to other people. Right. Yeah possibly that's what the assumption would be so it's um it's pretty uh pretty bait um if it is Ma Jed, he could see i don't know how it is in the uk but you could be saying seeing some some hot jail time gotta make a run to argentina argentina hang yeah. out with hitler and tupac so it's it's not looking good for whichever j mod was actually doing this it was Ma Jed, 100 <laughs> percent. 
I, I, like, I don't really know anyone who would gain from this. Like, the main thing why I'm, like, so certain is that the people that got hit the hardest would, like, there was a lot of, like, rival clan members. And the thing is that they would drop untradables, which is, like, super douchey. If it was just for, like, monetary gain, you would just be, like, hacking, like, Spark Mac, maybe? Like, some big stakers? What are you going to do with 45 bill? Just real world trade it. Yeah, exactly. If you're not, you're not going to keep it on your account. You're going to real world trade it. Yeah. But honestly, I feel like there's a part of us. Obviously, there's part of a story we're missing. But I don't think it's as black and white as, hey, Mod Jed wanted to real world trade some money, get some cash on the side. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. This is where you should cue the conspiracy music. That's what I was thinking. Nice. So the main, this is the biggest question: is why would he do this? I have a number of of uh, ideas. I have one. Can I say it? Let's see here. I'm pretty sure if he's in Rot, which he probably was still in Rot, he was in Rot at one point, they most likely have some, like, really... Inc- something that is worse. Big speculation, by the way. Big speculation. But they probably have some incriminating data that is worse than, like, what he would go to jail for for this you know what i mean like that will like you have to do this for us so you think it's blackmail oh 100 100 like if they're gonna ddos and dox people they could have easily like catfished or, like fucking this jmon into saying doing some shit you know what i mean and they could like if he had maybe i don't know if he has a wife and kids but if he did he could they maybe are able to have some sort of information that could ruin his home life which he feels is worse than ruining his job. So, okay, what's worse than being unhirable in this Depends in this career are. path? Depends who you are. Well, Some like, people will would rather have that than lose their wife and kids and house. Maybe. Well, like, here's the thing. So, what wh- what's worse? Like, what could be worse than losing your entire career and jail time as well? Your career because you're unhirable at this point. That's what I- I'm. S- if he's found guilty. Which he probably will be. Well, not pro- I should, I, actually, I should not say that. If he's found guilty, then he's unhirable in this career because he's no, and, and actually in any company really. Like he, if they know his past, he'll be like at an entry level. Like he'll you he'll be, be able- joining us at the grocery store. Yeah, no, because he's gonna fucking start. Or- he's gonna get an ordering gun two weeks in, like they expect me to do. Start and stealing fucking- apples. Yeah. Yep, load these apples into this truck here. Just like, we got like 36 RuneScape fucking time cards coming <laughs> in. They're all missing. But he's going to be unhirable, or like, if he gets hired into any company that knows his background, he's never moving up to any real position. Because anything that involves any sensitive data, like, you can't, you, no smart person would let someone who would like misuse and possibly sell data. Unless it turns to be true, he was being blackmailed. Then you have a little bit of a uh, opening where some Maybe. companies are gonna, you know what I mean? The charges might get dropped. Well, right? okay, so, so why did you do it? I'm being blackmailed. Okay, well, this you're, you're fucked in the head. Then there's something fucked up going. On. You know what I mean? Like, and then also jail times. There's got to be some like not got to, but like I think that there's something that he's being blackmailed with that like would fucking ruin everything. Like some serious yeah. shit. It's not like this is where you live because you could find that easily. You know what I mean? So in that video, if we remember, they went as far as to find rival clan members, family members, and dox them. I remember there's a part in it showing where they're doxing someone else's sister. Dead botting. We talked about him in the last episode, actually. He's the leader of Lit, but they doxed him and they, like, mail him salt and shit. Like, as a meme, but, like, they, they do kind of, like, at least troll people in real life. You know how bad mob mentality can get, right? Yep. Group thinking. It just takes one person to push someone to start doing more yep. fucked up shit. Look at 4chan. They do Who's some- that. He is a uh, does some weird things. Yeah. W- what are your thoughts? What do you think? What do you think is going on? What do you think caused this? Do you think it's just greed and like just him being young, or do you think that there's actually like something going on? I don't think, as I said, I don't think it's as black and white as. I'm going to hack these people because I want more money in my bank account. Yeah. That does not make sense. Why would you risk your job for 60000 Yeah. That's... You would, like, implement it, a bug that would give you max cash stack. Sure, but even, like... <laughs> 
60,000, like a one-time payment of 60,000 really is not that much. It'd be way more because it was over the course of like nine months. Yeah, it, it, if he kept, he was able to keep on going with that, right? Like you're not like you're not hacking thirty bill or three hundred bill in a day. No, yeah, it over ha- the, it's it's like a slow burn. Yeah, so even still, sixty thousand dollars where it's a lot of money. Don't get me wrong, but like even when, if you go with like one hundred and fifty thousand over the course of a, like a year, ever since it's higher. Let's just say that. Let's just say that. Yeah. Okay. Let's super high ball. Not worth it. No, because. Now you're now you go from whatever. Let's say you're making forty thousand a year, which is probably on the low end. Mm-hmm. Now suddenly you're making twenty thousand if you can get a job doing that, right? Doing some entry level position where you're not getting full time and stuff. The main thing is you lose like all job security, all peace of mind in terms of like I'm gonna get caught. Yeah. So I do think there's more to the story. For it does not make. I don't think he's stupid enough to risk all of that for nothing except yeah. for the money. There is, as you said... Well, he is a PKer, so maybe he is. <laughs> but as you said, there has to be something that made him weigh out jail time and losing my job and all future careers on one hand versus what? What's the other thing? What's on the other hand that he was had to think about? I mean, I have ideas, but I'm not going to say them because, like, it's, it's really it's literal baseless accusations. It's kind of fucked up thing to do. Yeah. The one thing is, though, everyone knew that... This is, not like, my other, I guess, my, my side theory, but everyone knew that one kid that just wanted to fucking, like, please his buddies. You know what I mean? But to that extent... So this is where I also start agreeing with you some more. If you were just held at such a big controversial moment less than a year ago... Yeah. With the whole him being in the Rock Clan and all that stuff, why would you then continue to do stuff like this? Um, unless you really aren't smart you know what i mean you're just not thinking yeah so like the only thing i can really think of is one super fucked up shit or may- maybe some people listening were that kid back in like elementary school where you would like just do dumb shit or you had that friend that would just do dumb shit because everyone's like do it man oh it'd be so funny if you peed on the the slide i can't i can't think of anything but like and like but yeah, then you yeah. pee on the slide you get caught by the principal and then you start smashing the principal's windows like yeah, cup- I could, like you know, you know what I mean. Like, boy, like a, yeah. a group of kids you want to impress, they could be like, I, I say that th- pretending that he's an eight-year-old. How old's the guy? He's what, mid twenties, late twenties, above twenty. His brain's fully developed at this point. <laughs> There's no fuck. Well, he is a PK or so. And a RuneScape. So, don't forget, yeah. we're all RuneScape. So fully here. developed PK and brain is uh, probably like an eight-year-old. I seriously feel like some fucked up shit is going on that we don't know about. I would love to be a fly on the wall in that courtroom. See, here's the thing, though. Once the court is done, doesn't it become public? I, I think, it, like, at least in North America, it becomes public information, right? I don't know how it is in the UK, it, um, but it, you could possibly look through the documents. Maybe you might you might maybe. have to like go be in a university because I know certain things at least in, like, America and shit, are locked behind universities. They get to be, like, in school so you can study, whatever. Um, They might have access to ones that are kind of held away. But for the most part, it does become public information. Look at all, you know, big murders and serial killer, you Mm -hmm. know. That information gets let out as soon as the case basically gets closed. Yeah, so I guess... and But this could go on for years. Yeah, they tend to. This could go on for, like fucking two three four five six seven eight nine ten like not that long but like a while if they can get a good lawyer right yep if it turns out they were actually being blackmailed it's gonna be a longer yeah trial it'll be squirrely so i feel like this is something this might be just the beginning of a story yeah the beginning of like the saga of, of well this could be frieza dying and she comes back as another form the second form the second or like form. cell like we're gonna see perfect cell soon. That's what that's that's perfect the point cell. we're at. We thought this was the spirit bomb. Spirit bomb ain't killing him though. Yeah. Um. Well, actually, what if what if he was like guilty and he sneaks out in jail time? The saga continues. Yeah. You find out he's like hack some more RuneScape gold. Yeah. Goes to a library, finds some kids at the park playing on their game on the on their phone. Yeah. Snags it, takes the items. Him and his rob buddies beat him up. Yeah. Take their phones and drop trade some wet willies and swirlies. Yeah. Because there's not, like, much else to go on. Like, I don't know if, like, there's not really many theories we could go on without, like, fucking grasping for straws and, like, Mod Ash orchestrated this to improve his... Like, like, you can't, like, 
whatever. That doesn't really work. But the most plausible theory is a blackmailing one, which I'm kind of has me questioning things. But you, you know, obviously, it well, Rot might have kidnapped his sister and it, held her hostage. It could, it could, yeah, either be some weird mob mentality thing that goes too far, or like, dude, what if like Rot is like some sort of fucking weird ass like cult? Like, you get to a point where you've been in the clan so long that you just kind of do. I mean, that's definitely not it. We're more than RuneScape players. Yeah. We're family. We're, we're, <laughs> we're brothers. Yeah. <laughs> but, blood, um... Blood packs. The main thing to talk about is... What else do these players that got hacked have to worry about? Because they've been hacked before, so if it's the Jmod himself that logs in, and he isn't releasing the information, he could they could be okay. But if they're getting other players to hack these people and recover their accounts... Their account recovery info is permanently out there. You think you might do it from jail? No, I mean, like, let's just say Mod Jed is, like, at work during his fap time or thap time or tap time, whatever you want to call it, and he just sends a fucking notepad or, like, a PDF of, like, this is this guy's name. Here's all his recovery details. And this is his IP. This is his ISP. He's the thing that information technically is out there, right? In one way or another, so these these accounts could be permanently compromised unless Jagex does a sticky note like they do with Zezma and Spark Mac. Like some accounts, like Bodhi, they make a little sticky note being like, "Don't don't fucking give away this this info, idiot. This is people could try to hack them again." You know, like so you gotta send your driver's license over if you really want your account back. Yeah, but is like does Jagex support team? Like, are they actually able to do that? Because we still don't. The one thing everyone's crying out for now is. This whole thing could have been avoidable if we had a delay to remove the authenticator. Could it, though? Yeah. Let's, let's well, that, is it not possible to bypass that if you have the admin privileges? But then it's super obvious when it instantly get picked up. If someone said, I got hacked, and you look, and you're like, they bypass an authenticator, how did this happen? And then they would be able to find out, like, the first time it happened, they would know. But would it not alert something when 45 bill disappears from somebody's account? That's not a normal amount of gold to just disappear or trade over to an alt. You'd think it would flag but something. But it's happened time and time again, and a lot of times, Jmods, they're like, yeah, like, you fucking real or trade. This is hard evidence that you're account sharing, real or trade, whatever, blah, 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 blah. But when these accounts get hacked and they have, like, day one recovery info, because, like, that's, if you're going to get an account that easy, that account's always going to be compromised, but this is, like, a three or four day authenticator removal. And they go, someone, re- like, recovered your account. Then you could immediately be like, what the fuck? Take the account back, put the authenticator back on, make a post, be like, Jagex, what the fuck? Or, like, make a ticket. Be like, someone just tried to hack me, remove my authenticator. It wasn't me. And it would have saved a sentencing. Someone's fucking couple of years of someone's life. Possibly. I don't know, this is getting out of my area of expertise. But a lot of people do cry out for that, right? Yeah, I, I, th- I think... It's actually up to Jagex. I think they literally have to do this, where employee is found guilty for actually really like they don't have any other way of like protecting the players. We have a horrible account recovery system that you can't really change. If someone knows your day one login info, like the day the account's created, all this shit, they'll always be able to get your account back. There's no way to change it. Yeah. And if you can instantly remove an authenticator and just do whatever the fuck you want with an account, tough luck. Like, I think it's up to Jagex now to make sure that this can't happen again. Even if it's not by a Jmod, the fact that it's, you know... Yeah, it's a possibility. It's hard to say, but wow, what a week for this to happen. It feels like the end of the story, but I feel like it's the beginning of another. It's just the end of a chapter. Yeah, maybe like a couple years from now we'll have like a bonus content of going over the entire legal documents. <laughs> <laughs> Everything he says. Maybe Serial will pick this up as a podcast season. I don't know who that is. They do, uh, they follow you know, a certain crime event. Oh. And they go through the whole story and try to get as much information. Yeah. But yeah, I guess all in all, like, thankfully Jagex is transparent enough to let us know. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I know a lot of shady things, like, maybe not on this, to this caliber, but shady things do happen in other gaming companies, and you hear nothing from the team. Do you think they're, they're, they were legally... I guess not. I guess they weren't legally obligated to tell because no actual um, credit cards or anything were leaked in the no. process of this. No, like when Sony got hacked, right? Yeah, they came out and say it. Gave, gave everybody some free games. 
This one, yeah, they came out and said it, and then they came back and updated it a day later with the information about the credit cards being saved. So I think that just shows kind of like the type of company that Jagex is or wants to be. Yeah. What they're striving for is a is a very community based company, which is kind of rare to see when you have a company of that size, especially yep. now when the game's bigger than ever, right? Yep. Makes sense when the team was four people, but now you have multiple teams. Yeah. If you guys have any theories, let us know. I'm interested to hear about it. Maybe you know more about, maybe you watch a lot of crime documentaries and you got a, an inkling of something else. Maybe he has a drug addiction. Yeah. Eh? I gotta like pivot like, the, the mod Jed meme now. Do you? Because if he's in jail. Or is it stronger than ever? I mean, if he's in jail, how is he going to be fucking with our game? How how do How does it, when they lock up gang members, how does the mob boss put out hits when he's in jail? That happens all the time. Oh, dude, have you seen the interview with like some high up Mexican like uh, gang leader? And he's in jail, and he, and he talked. Well, he left, but he talked about how people would sit down and during like visiting hours, and they have a normal conversation. But the actual conversation is like, kill this guy, kill this guy, make a deal with th- these people. But it sounds like a total normal conversation. Maybe maybe that's like what's gonna go on, or Jed yeah. will be. Like, How's um the front lines? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I can't think of anything that would be relatable. Yeah. Who knows? Um, so I don't think the villainy is over. It could just begun. He not just begun. It could continue. <laughs> okay. Last thing, and I guess we'll we'll move on. Do you think that so if it's actually Ma Jed that's being? Because I mean, it probably is, but they legally can't tell us. But if Ma Jed is the um. That's been caught doing this. The culprit. Be- because of his relations to Rot, and if, it, and if it's proven that it's, like, Rot members are, like, kind of benefiting from this or involved in this, do you think it's up to Jax to, to attempt to ban the current members in Rot? Maybe not all of them. I would say just the ones involved in any sort of way. But how would you know? Well, they have all the data of them trading. You know what I mean? It's like when... You wouldn't trade to your main account. That's no, ridiculous. but it's... It's similar to when gold farmers or bots get banned and they're able to find out all the accounts that are linked to them. Yeah, but you could they could easily hack the account and just make a level three, right? Yeah. VM, virtual machine, mask IPs. I don't think it's fair to ban every single person because I'm sure, sure some people just join it wanting to be part of the clan scene. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we'll see certain members within the clan just get banned one day and yeah the whole thing is they'll come back but they're gonna have to either buy accounts and like bought up to max stats again or something but like some sort of punishment right yeah if they're linked in any way i'm sure they'll they'll be dealt with even maybe even legally but really i think what needs to happen first is for the trial to happen yeah where all the details can come out who knows maybe we can get some information on that yeah yo real talk you think when jet was getting put in that police car he's crying like a little bitch i don't think he got put into a police car I think he just got fired. I don't know, actually. You need at least security to escort him. Yeah, maybe. Then he'd be like crying like a little bitch ass punk. I mean, I would. <laughs> Knowing that you could be facing mm. multiple years in jail all yeah. over a silly game. Hey, that's happened to one player already. That's true. This yeah. is the player that called the bomb threat. Not a bomb threat, but he made a threat in, in RuneScape. S- school shooting, right? Yeah. And uh, he went to jail for a couple of years. He's actually had a YouTube channel. Yeah, I I remember seeing it. Um, Talks about jail. Yeah, I guess we'll quickly bring it up since you did it. Yeah, he said he made a death threat about shooting up a school in his area. That was the problem was that he named a school. Yeah. And he had been drinking. To him, it was just a edgy threat. Little joke, little goof. Yeah, kind of a little little 4chan threat. Yeah. But this was right around some the time during some school shootings, even though those, those seem to be happening all the time now. Yep. But... Someone had reported him, and Jagex took it very seriously, and yeah. Yeah, he went to jail for a little bit. Yeah, he was actually a Canadian boy, too. Yeah. Our CMP showed up. Put him on the old horse. Yeah, put him on the horse, roped his hands up. Tied him behind the, the horse, actually. And yeah, just... dragged him. That was... He's not doing too well. <laughs> a little excessive, but... Yeah, he was released sometime last year, I believe. Yeah. So. Anyways. Crazy should we, stuff. Should we move on to uh, some more positive things? Sure. Yeah. So I, I guess that was that's what's happened in the community. This yeah, is, that was the community. So, but the end of a chapter, possibly the end of a saga. But do 
stay tuned for more. We're hopefully we can get more information if anything else happens. Mm-hmm. Anyways, that being said, let's move it on to some good old fashioned lore. This week for lore, we are continuing with the four God Wars bosses. This being our third installment, we will be tackling Criera and the origins of the bosses and their fight for the God Sword. Criera is a powerful aviancy, which is a race of bird like humanoids who all follow the god Armadil. Criera is a general for Armadil and has led their armies. During the Third Age, in the middle of the God Wars, Zamorak's power had expanded greatly and was a threat to many of the gods. This caused Armadil, Bandos, and Ceridomen to agree upon a truce, even though this was not something they had wanted or planned for. But they knew if they wanted to survive in the wars, they would need to defeat Zamorak. The three gods then created a weapon that was so strong it had the capabilities of destroying a god. This was known as the God Sword. The God Sword was handed to a flock of Aviancies and was sent to carry it to an unknown location. While the Aviancies were on their way, they were ambushed by Zamorakian forces. This forced them to hide inside of a temple, prompting the three gods to send reinforcements in order to save them and the God Sword. So, Bandos sent General Grador, Ceridomen sent Commander Ziliana, and Armadil sent Criera. But before the flock of Aviancies could be saved from the Zamorakian forces, General Grador decided to betray the group and fight for his own possession of the God Sword. Since the three, which turned into just Ceridomen and Armadil, were never true allies, but only allies of circumstance, their mistrust deteriorated their peace, and soon it became an all-out battle between the four gods in order to obtain the God Sword. In a battle between Ziliana and Criera, Criera's forces lost possession of one of their most powerful weapons, the Armadil Crossbow, where Ziliana took control of it and was able to obtain for use in combat. In the midst of the battle, an unknown army attempted to cast a spell, but it had backfired and instead froze the entire cave. Fast forward to the Fifth Age, in the year we currently play in, 169, tectonic movements within the wilderness caused the God Wars dungeon to crack open, unfreezing them from their spell, where the battle still continues to this day, as they are unaware that the God Wars is over, and are still fighting for control of the God Sword. A lot of this lore has been pulled from RS3, but we will be coming back to the God Sword topic to discuss the actual origins of the weapon itself in more detail. Until next week, we will talk about Ziliana and her role during the God Wars. Okay, now it's... um. Move on to another short segment where we get to sell it a little bit. Offer the Grand Exchange. We need to get some music for this. So this is a chance where we can tell you about our sponsor. Our sponsor sir, is Audible. Go to audibletrial.com slash wild. We can get a free month with a free book and see if you like it. They have a bunch of audiobooks. If you uh, like to read or you're interested in books, but maybe you don't have time to read, check them out. The book that you might be interested in might be there. They have some pretty, they have a large selection with some really great narrators to go along with it. So definitely recommend it. And if you like podcasts, chance you might like Audible. So that's audibletrial.com slash wild. Won't go over the books we're reading because, or listening to, I should say. Mm-hmm. I just haven't had too much time to get m- more through it. It's been a little busy. Our next sponsor of the show is you guys, our Patreon supporters. Our Patreon supporter of the week is Melton. So I want to thank you so much for directly helping us keep the show going without having to worry about our funding issues. You know, now that I have to work a part-time job, I don't get the most hours all the time. And I don't want to have the burden of paying for this podcast. But it's really awesome to see that you guys are willing to actually help us out. So thank you very much, Melton. And also, congratulations on base 80 stats. I know you got that a little while ago. Very satisfying to see. Oh, yeah. Good milestone. (laughs) I don't even have base 80s yet. Yeah. I need to get my hunting and farming up still. Yeah, hunting. Farming? What? Yeah, fuck farming. You can get that done in a day. Literally, yeah, but... Eh, fuck it. But yeah, thank you very much, Melton, for um, for supporting us. It, we really do appreciate it, and very grateful. But we also got three new new club members, Patreon members, wild, wild boy and gal members. Some wild boys. Some new wild boys. 
So these people are Ty Peters, Ethan Ward, and Isaiah Peters. So thank you very much for pledging to us this month. But I also want to thank every single person who decided to pledge for us for doing so. You guys are amazing, and I can't believe this support the support we got. It's it's overwhelming. On par with this whole Mod Jed fiasco. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thanks, thanks, guys. All right, but we got some fun stuff going on in the in the clan chat, the Discord podcast. So Blacksmith Bully is having a comeback. I shouldn't say comeback, but he makes a bunch of really cool in-game items, but he makes them the real-life figurines, miniatures, objects. He smelts them out of... and... Yeah. Paddy wax. Bunch of cool things. He's done the Dragon Dagger. That was the first one. He did Dragon Dagger. He's done Party Hats. He's done... The Dwarf uh, Cannon. Yep, did the Dwarf Cannon. He's done a... I want to say a Battle Axe and the Warhammer. Yeah, and I think a Cash Stack as well. The Cash Stack. Yeah, and now we got a dragon longsword. Yeah, and this thing looks amazing. Yeah. It looks really cool. I'm sorry, but I do have to get on this competition. I normally stay out of them because I don't want to, you know, I feel feel kind of bad, but mm-hmm. this thing is so fucking cool looking. It's the size of your leg. Like, you could you could bring it to your classes, your HEMA classes, yep. and just spec out some noobs. I mean, it'll do a lot of damage because it's real metal. But he does great work. He usually brings puts them on a plaque and stuff, wooden mm-hmm. plaque. The handle gets like leather straps and stuff. Yeah. So they are sweet looking. But anyways, there'll be more information on how you can win that. He'll be posting. You can ask him in game too, but he'll be posting in the Discord on how you can do that and when it's actually going to take place. And we'll also post it on our Twitter and Facebook when the more information comes around. But right now, it's just kind of up in the air. But yep. keep your eyes out for that if you do want to win it. And... If you saw it, you're going to want to win it. But uh, speaking of giveaways, Deegan, you had something in the works, didn't you? Yep. This has kind of gone on for like two and a half weeks. I was going to end it, but I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I might as well wait for this episode to like announce it, I guess, live. Who wins? Um, So if you listen to this, you're going to be a couple days late, but whatever. So pretty much the thing was for, I guess, related to bonus content. What I was just trying to get like an idea of what um, viewers wanted to hear from me. Yeah, something that we could release... For, like, bonus content. Because, like, Dills has his ideas. Um, I have mine, but I also was just curious. Like, you know, hey, what would you like to see Deegan do for bonus content? And it's something just to supplement the show. So the normal show would still go. But every now and then you might get two episodes in a week. Yeah. But this one would be completely different. It wouldn't be on, you know, the way these these ones go. Yep. And thankfully, because of our Patreon supporters, we were able to upgrade our servers so that we can have more space to put more content on. So I don't know if I mentioned it last episode, but it's not like whatever got the most responses i will be doing i just wanted a basic idea i pretty much i have some ideas i'm gonna i have like I'm laying down like it's like a think tank brainstorm some ideas and then you can kind of see what appeals to you well my thing is i already had a bunch of ideas but it was like typically i'll think of something and think it's way better than it actually is and okay. then i'll start working on it and be like this is <laughs> shit like if, like on my my hard like one of my hard drives on my pc is just like there's like 30 fucking runescape related videos that are like mostly done and then i go and like watch them and i'm like this is so fucking bad let me just <laughs> let me just like, abandon this but so i'm like laying down i guess the groundwork for like a script for one of them the whole thing was just like a one question survey and it was like what would you like to see for me there was a couple couple like i guess i guess i'll read off what the questions or what what the answers you could do i guess i don't know the suggestions so there was some of the things that you could like answer i guess or one-on-one type interview format similar to what what dills is going to be doing the next one would be a breakdown of skills and training methods and then another one would be like a youtube related content because our youtube doesn't really get much love it's just audio of our podcast yeah and then the other one was looking at certain aspects of the game and then like kind of like old school rs3 and just general mmos but obviously it'd be related to like old school but you know comparisons and all that similar to like what my soapbox would be at the beginning if you listen to the early episodes deegan's corner i think we called it or the yeah. hot topic yeah so it wouldn't be as bitchy it'd be like a lot more formal and like scripted yeah right so i'd, I'd go with like a basic idea and then i would dive into it and see how it like affects blah blah blah, blah whatever and then it was other and then you if you chose other you could just say whatever you wanted put in your rs name boom you're entered to win 10 mil so out of all those the most common I got, and keep in mind, 
like I I went through like everyone who responded to make sure no one was trying to pull the wool over my eyes and like put in peer names and stuff. Mod Jed the the polls. Yeah. Um. You know. So I went through and if there was any of that stuff, I I made sure to, I went through all the accounts and you know some names I knew. So I'm like, okay, I know these people. I don't know these guys. Let me let me go look through their accounts. I okay, found their <laughs> twitters. Okay. You know. Did did my investigation to make sure no one was um fudging the numbers. Yes, yeah, so the, the most common one was the breakdowns of skills and training methods. So I guess that that got for actually forty seven percent, eighteen percent was um that's the next one was like a one on one type interview format, thirteen percent just YouTube related content, and then yeah like everything else was small because there's like a lot of others and whatnot. Anyways, enough uh, babbling. So no seventy five percent looks like you can't do any of them. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> Thanks guys. Uh, <laughs> we tried. We tried. Anyways. Um, yeah, so I, what, I, what I've done is, with the list of all the accounts, I, like, numbered them, plugged the numbers into, like, random.org, and then just whatever number comes up to that okay. person. I felt like that was, like, the the fairest way. I, I could have done, like, a, a hat draw, but... It's a lot of names to write out. Yeah, my pen... I will be like, I don't even know what this name is. I fucked it up. <laughs> just, like, just my hand. Why did so I bad. handwrite all of them? Yeah, anyway, so I guess... Drum roll, but the winner of ten mil is Deegan? No. no it's it's actually Penance Hunt, so congratulations. Oh nice. Yeah. Congrats. I see him see him chilling in the CC. So that's nice. That's um, awesome. Congrats. Yo, just to piss some of you guys off, um Razorwire was nineteen, Penance Hunt was number twenty. Oof. Razorwire you're nineteen and Sparky ninety four you're twenty one. So you guys are almost there. I just want to piss piss some of you guys off. You do one more, I'll give them one mil. Let's yeah. do a one mil draw. Penance Hunt again? No. No, no. It was Color Eyes, actually. Color Eyes. Yeah. Cool. Some familiar names there. Yeah. So um, congratulations to Penance Hunt for 10 mil and Color Eyes for one mil. I, I, don't, I don't have... Dean, can you spot me the, the one mil? Dude, can you spot me the 10 mil? <laughs> <laughs> Congrats, uh, Penance Hunt on nine mil. Yeah. So I guess after recording, I will message these people on discord and the cc i'll try and find you guys in the cc i, I do see like these two on in the cc quite a bit so it'll be pretty easy to hook you guys up but yeah thanks for everyone and i really do appreciate like some of i got some really interesting feedback for like some people would like i like this type of content but you could do this along you're know, like man that's a sick idea you know what i mean like, mm-hmm. actually like a lot of things i didn't think of for you guys and so put that in the old melting pot you know it's a one-on-one interviews in a YouTube series that is um, looking at certain aspects of OSRS while also efficient in training. I don't know. You know you know the joke I'm trying to make. No, um, no idea. Okay, never mind. <laughs> is Mod Jet related? See, I could do that. Uh, we already talked about it, though. I, I can't go make an, another episode of the, the meme of Mod Jed. Just cut that part of the podcast. <laughs> Wow, I didn't realize how lazy it was going to be. <laughs> yeah. You go through old episodes and just cut parts where you talked about wood cutting and stuff. But then everyone realizes that I don't know how to like do any audio en- like engineering. So you just like, so, um, yeah, so this is the story of Mod Jet. And it's just like awful <laughs> audio quality. You hear like people in the background. I'm actually outside. You can hear like the neighbors <laughs> and shit barbecuing. Cool stuff. Speaking of surveys, we do have a survey for the podcast. If you're interested in giving us some feedback since we are currently in our going currently going through our year three season three of the podcast long seasons um you want to give us feedback on things you like things you don't like things you'd like to see all that good stuff and just tell us ways we can improve you can do that unfortunately no money tied with that one i have one mil so it's gone now Mm -hmm. but yeah just something if you want to take time out to help us out there is a, a link to the the google survey Twitter, Facebook, and Discord, or you can just message me and I can get you it as well because it might get lost in the in the post, in the post traffic. Mm-hmm. Anyways, if you're wondering, whoa, I don't know what your Twitter and all that stuff is. Well, great. Now I can tell you right now. Our Twitter is at the Wilderness RS. Our Facebook is facebook.com slash the Wilderness Podcast. We also have, have a Facebook group now, which makes it a little bit easier to fu- to share things and have a discussion find the link because it's like a bunch of numbers and I'm not going to list it off because no one's going to, they teach us in radio. You never put the phone number and stuff like that in an ad because nobody memorizes it. Unless you got a catchy jingle. Isn't it like the, um, memory chunks? People, just, who, people you, who remember like up to seven things at a time in a chunk. 
maybe it's just more like you're on in the car you're not gonna remember like seven four two three six eight seventeen forty six nine four twenty six nine four twenty seventy three yeah had runes came even there <laughs> oh yeah and then our in-game clan chat is wild cc our email is the wilderness podcast at gmail.com and our discord link also a bunch of letters and numbers but you can find that link on twitter facebook or message us in game and we can get you a link so you can join and come hang out all right so i forgot to pull a song of the week for this one so we're gonna do the song tempest because i think it's a it's a really well done track but i hope we haven't done it already i can't remember so if we have i apologize send us in a request though we can switch things up. Anyways, Tempest Track is a music track that is unlocked during the fight with the Grotesque Guardians who are found on the Slayer Tower's rooftop. In order to access the roof, players must f- obtain a brittle key from Gargoyles while assign them for a Slayer task. This song was composed by Ashley Bridges, so Mod Ash himself did this one. Yeah, so that's it. Enjoy the song, and I hope you enjoyed the show and the the ending of a chapter. Yeah. For the saga of Mod Jed. Hey right, guys, um, meme's dead, but uh, I am always right, and that meme's still alive. <laughs> yeah, okay. Nah, uh, we can roll with it. Yeah, I guess. Uh, till next week, jet jet on. Can we do that? Is that a let's scape? How about something like that? I think we've done that before. Yeah, gamers at your mark or at your mark. Get set game. RuneScape unite. Um, scapers unite. Can we make modern- rock scapers scissors? Okay, anyways, have a good one. Let's get out of here. Bye-bye.